Hey, Jeff and Night. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Age of a Night 2024. It's great to have you with us. My name is Madeline Russell. And I'm Guy Elston, and we'll be your host for the evening. So welcome, everybody, to Age of a Night. The Meet the Presses Collective is back with exciting news to share, including regarding our upcoming annual Indie Lit Market. And of course, we'll be announcing the finalists for the 2024 BP Nickel Chapbook Award for the Best English Language Poetry Chapbook published in Canada in the previous year. For anyone who doesn't know, this is the 38th anniversary of the BP Nickel Chapbook Award, awarded annually since 1986. Previous winners include Jason Christie, Sonad Labay, Lisa Robertson, Susan Musgrave, many, many other brilliant poets. We're really honoured to play our part in continuing this annual prize, highlighting the brilliant things happening in the Canadian poetry chapbook scene. We are so excited. I'm so sorry. I almost cut you off, Guy. Um, and that's how excited I am. But before we go any further, Meet the Presses, which has historically operated out of Toronto, would like to collectively acknowledge our presence on the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations. The area known as Toronto is located on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, Confederacy, the Wendat, the Métis, and the Mississauga of the Credit First Nation. Toronto remains home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people today. The territory is also covered by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty and the Two Row Wampum Treaty, which required all those who use the land to do so responsibly to care for the land and share it peaceably. As this is a virtual event and many of you may be calling in from across the continent, we invite you to take a moment to acknowledge the lands you inhabit and the many Indigenous peoples who have called those lands home since time in memoriam. Whether we're writers, publishers, readers, or dreamers, we are all st stewards of storytelling, so it is our responsibility to acknowledge the past no matter how uncomfortable and to understand how it has shaped our president present in order to continue the work of building a better future. Thank you, Madeline. Um, we do have some changes to announce to our membership this year as well. So our Meet the Presses Collective is now comprised of your host here tonight, myself, Guy Elston. And me, Madeline Russell, as well as Sarah Jean Abernathy, Gary Barwin, Becca Lawler, Claudia Kindrachuk, Jennifer Lovegrove, Renee Saragini Saklakar, Shailen Schwig, Urgeny Swalik, Aaron Tucker, Jacqueline Valencia, and Tally Veron. Founding members emeritus are Paul Dutton, Maria Erskine, Ali Fleming, Beth Follett, Maggie Helwig, Lee Nash, Nick Power, and Stuart Ross. An impressive bunch, to be sure. Absolutely. Um, and as a non-profit, Meet the Process wouldn't be what it is today if it weren't for all those volunteers who have come and gone over its long lifetime. Uh, I'm a pretty new volunteer myself, but I do know that whether it's through managing, uh, managing award submissions, crafting social media content, reaching out to jurors, organizing physical spaces for events like the Indie Lit Market, or the crucial but often overlooked tech support, <laughs> these outstanding folks mm. make it all happen. If you'd like to help support Meet the Presses with administration costs, future indie lit markets, the BP Nickel Chapbook Award, and all the work we do as a collective supporting the Canadian independent literary industry, then please consider taking a short visit to meetthepresses.wordpress.com, where you can make a donation via PayPal to keep Meet the Presses moving, shaking, and making changes. Right, and any donation you make, however big or small, would be massively appreciated. But now, uh, please sit back, grab a drink of your choice, and we can all get ready to enjoy an H of a night. Uh, as we previously said, we will be announcing the finalists of the BP Nickel Chatbook Award, as well as what I'm most looking forward to, actually listening to some readings from the finalists themselves. But we'll also be giving some insight into what the indie lit market will look like this year, uh, taking place on Sunday 17th of November in Toronto, so save the date. Despite being rooted in traditions regarding things like our indie lit market, we want to acknowledge how important change is to literature and we're welcoming in new small presses. So we're excited to see what small press can mean. It's not all about ink on page. In fact, we're excited to learn more about sonic presses that are creating a space for things such as spoken word poetry to exist beyond single performances. Absolutely. And um, we do have a special guest we're excited to welcome who has a vast knowledge of this in particular and of a contemporary canlit scene. 
Um, they have a particular interest in the intersection between music and literature. Um, Kelly Barron is a PhD candidate at the University of Toronto's Department of English, where she studies contemporary Canadian literature. She's a regular reviewer for the Literary Review of Canada, and her scholarly work can be found in Canadian literature, literature studies in Canadian literature, and English studies in Canada, among others. With Andrew, Andrew sorry, Dubois, she's co-editing Singing Me, O Muse, Music in as Literature, Bloomsbury 2025. Kelly is the former publisher of the Ex-Puritan, uh, formerly known as the Puritan Literary Magazine. And with Andrew Whiteman, she's developing the soon-to-launch Sonic Poetry Label and Archive, Siren Recordings. Now, I know Siren hosted a fantastic night of Sonic Poetry in Toronto quite recently. So we're really excited to learn more from Kelly about this part of the poetry scene and some of her plans moving forward. Take it away, Kelly. Hi, all. My name is Kelly Barron, and I'm the managing director of the forthcoming Siren Recordings. Some of you lovely h Night folks know us already from an event we hosted in August that brought together four generations of sound poets onto one stage. And some of you will be hearing about us for the first time right now. Uh, when Siren launches later this fall, we are going to be a boutique sonic poetry label and archive. Uh, for our archival work, which will be digital and open access, we seek to preserve all forms of sonic poetry, what we are broadly imagining as artistic work that connects together music and literature. Our goal is for the archive to become a source of inspiration, research, and play for future scholars and practitioners of sonic poetry. Now, sonic poetry is an experimental art form that, I, that doesn't garner the same attention as the written word. I realize that for this virtual audience, I likely don't need to rationalize why we should value and preserve experimentation in art. But rationalize I will, albeit briefly. Uh, so in the words of our archival director, our Brandon Hokura, the first poetry was sound poetry long before the written word. And yet sonic poetry doesn't receive the same support and attention as the written or published work. Correspondingly, despite the archival turn in visual arts resulting in numerous symposiums, publications, and conferences centered around moving images and photography, audio archives remain undercared for. And it's not just audio archives, it's actual publishers of sonic poetry. You know, this asynchronous online event is to celebrate the new long list of the BP Nickel Chapbook Award, BP, among many other things, was a pioneering sound poet, one who has already influenced multiple generations of poets who have come after him. And yet, although BP would have been 80 this year, it is only now that the that government granting institutions like Shirt have caught up with his insights. Now they seek to understand how the arts have changed with the incorporation of digital technologies. Now they want to understand how those elements of audio and sound can end up creating new expressive possibilities in the arts. Now, sonic poetry illustrates this expressive possibility, but it's a fundamental misunderstanding to think that this is attributed to the rise uh, to the recent rise in digital arts. The current forms of sonic poetry are at least four generations old in Canada. The tone poems in the classical music tradition have been going on for hundreds of years. Indigenous oral traditions dating back thousands of years have frequently included elements of poetry with music. Sound poetry and sonic poetry is not new, but because of the, uh, the vulnerability of the media, it has consistently been ephemeral. Now, labels like Siren exist in the US and the UK, but somehow they don't yet exist in Canada, even though we have been home to some of the greatest contemporary experimenters of this form. So these would be the folks like BP Nickel and his collaborators, Michael Dean, Brian Dedora, Paul Dutton, Steve McCaffrey, John Riddell, Stephen Smith, and Richard Trular at Underwich, an anarchist press uh, that was active from 1978 to 1998 as part of Siren's mission as both label and archive. We'll be publishing new works of sonic poetry. You can look forward to an album from us in January, 2025 uh, from Ann Waldman. Uh, but we're also currently working on digitizing the works of the past. We are beginning with the Underwitch Audio Graphics editions. 
which means that today I am thrilled to be sharing an otherwise unheard Four Horsemen recording with you. Now, the Four Horsemen, um, of course, were a sound poetry group of Steve McCaffrey, Paul Dutton, Rafael Barreto Rivera, and yes, BP Nickel. Their rarest tape is Bootleg, uh, a 1981 cassette release of uh, 30, which all when all of the other Underwitch releases were on a run of 100. We've digitized the master of the tape, that's courtesy of Steve McCaffrey's collection, and Paul Dutton has confirmed the context for us. In his words, quote, McCaffrey objected to the poor quality and insisted on the cassette's withdrawal, missing the whole point of bootleg recordings that Nickel was playing off when he produced and released it. It was a thing at the time with any number of big name bands and artists, Dylan, The Who, etc., of whom unauthorized concert recordings were made on the sly and released sub rosa. Beep got the idea because of a pair of knee-high boots Steve sometimes wore and which Barry used a photo of on their own as the cover of the J card. So the recording that I am about to share is the Four Horsemen's riff on John Cage's famous statement, I have nothing to say and I am saying it and that is poetry. Cage was one of the great avant-garde composers of the 20th century with his most famous piece being 433, a silent work where the musicians who play the piece do nothing aside from being present on the stage for the four and a half minutes of the performance. It ends up being a statement on silence and the role of silence in music and performing arts. Nothing is ever nothing. And the silences in the Four Horsemen's version of it certainly reinforce that idea. Now I'm going to play the first two minutes of this recording. Um, when we launch the website later this fall, you'll be able to listen to the full tape. It's approximately 31 minutes, as you can see on my screen. Uh, and uh, so it means that it will be available to all who wish to continue to listen, learn, and be inspired by BP's work. I am I have nothing to say. I nothing to say, and that's poetry. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. Nothing. Poetry. Poetry. And I am saying, I am to say, saying it, nothing, saying it, to say, I have nothing to say. And that is, I, nothing, I have. Nothing to say, <coughs> and I am saying is nothing, and that's poetry. Nothing to say, and I am saying I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say, and that is I am saying nothing. That is I am saying. Nothing to say is nothing to say. And I am saying. And that is okay. nothing. And nothing to say is <laughs> that. <laughs> I have nothing to say. And that is nothing. That is poetry. And I am saying. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to say is nothing to say. There is, of course, another half hour, multiple other tracks. It's an incredible tape to be able to listen to. I'm really excited to be able to make it public. Um, for now, thank you for listening. Thank you for appreciating poetry, even if you have nothing to say. 
If you want to follow us on Instagram, we're Siren Recordings. The website's going to be launched later on this fall. If you want to contact me directly, you can find my email on the slide. Enjoy the rest of your H of the night, and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible at the Indie Lit Fest in November. Thank you so much, Kelly. That's some really interesting and exciting stuff. And if you're hoping to see more from Siren Recordings, guess what? They're actually going to be at the Indie Lit Market this year. So come on down and check them out. Um, as the poetry scene is ever changing. Speaking of which, here's a natural seamless segue into talking about the change of location for the Indie Lit Market this year. Smoothly done, Madeline. Um, <laughs> as, as some of you may have seen from our social media, Meet the Press is we're bringing our annual Indie Lit Market to the Cecil Centre on Sunday, November 17th. The Cecil Centre is a fantastic not-for-profit multipurpose community space in the heart of Toronto. Uh, it's near to Spadina College and easily accessible by public transit, so we're thrilled to be bringing over 30 presses to this great venue to showcase their work. We don't have time now to cover all the presses that will be there, uh, but to mention just a few, uh, we've got Coach House, Palimpsest, Porcupine Squirrel, Baseline, Knife Fork Book, I mean, many, many more. Um, there's going to be a bunch of readings and book signing opportunities on the day too. We're looking forward to seeing and hearing from our member Emma writers, Paul Dutton on the day. Uh, that's right, <laughs> Paul will be returning at the end of the day to close up the event. Um, little side note, maybe from Madeline here. <laughs> <laughs> Paul was truly the glue that held us together and we miss him dearly. So you should definitely come down and see him. He's He worked so hard for us and we're so excited to see what he's work, been working on now. Um, and yeah, we're so excited for all the presses that will be there as well. Um, there's a little something for everyone. There's going to be children's press. Um, I love science fiction and fantasy, so I'm really excited to see Augur. I'm going to be doing double duty there. So come on down and check out some small um, local presses. Um, of course, the Indie Lit Market is where we're also going to be announcing the winner of this year's BP Nickel Award. That's right. Tonight we'll be announcing the finalists, but that's what we'll be announcing the winner. Um, but before that, we need to know who they are. Um, so as we've already mentioned, the BP Nickel Chapik Award uh, recognizes excellence in Canadian poetry in English um, as a chapbook published within Canada. The award celebrates the work and life of BP Nickel, a preeminent Canadian poet who devoted his career to expanding the possibilities of language, creating visual and sound poetry within and in addition to his numerous books and countless chapbooks. Nickel was a mentor to many writers and an inspiring community builder. He was an advocate for poetry in general and a champion of small press publishing in particular. We'd also like to highlight that some of the lines of poetry um, a selection of 80 pieces from his 1980s notebook recently came out uh, with Coach House Press. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think well worth checking that out. Um, BP Nichols said supporting small press is supporting literature on the cutting edge. Small press is the guardian of literary culture and free speech. And we couldn't agree with those sentiments more. And obviously, that's exactly the ethos we work by here at Meet the Presses. Towards the end of his life, Nickel co-founded with Philip McKenna of the Phoenix Foundation, a poetry chapbook award, which after Nickel's passing was renamed in his honor and has continued under the age of aegis first of the Phoenix Foundation and currently of Meet the Presses. So the prize is awarded uh, to an English language poetry chapbook judged to be the best submitted. The author themselves receives $4,000 and the publisher receives $500. The $4,000 prize is generously provided by an anonymous donor, and the $500 prize is generously provided by Carl Jurgens and Michael Dean. Um, and I'd also like to mention that there is an anonymous, anonymous donor of the uh, judge's honorarium, which we so appreciate, um, as we would be asking our judges to be volunteers of their time as well. So thank you so much to the anonymous donors and to Carl Jurgens and Michael Dean. Before we announce the winners, we want to thank and commend these generous donors for their support, which is absolutely vital for continuing the legacy of this great prize. Absolutely. Thank you to each and every one of you. Um, so I'm excited to invite one of our judges, um, Brian Dodora, to introduce the finalists of this year's award. He judged the prize with Chris Turnbull this year. Um, to let you know a little bit more about Brian, um, publishing experimental work since 1976, Dodora continues the tradition with Editorial Visor in Madrid and Book Hug in Toronto. Uh, they published his work on the Spanish playwright, poet and playwright Federico Garcia Lorca, 
titled Location that was in a bilingual edition in 2015. Also in 2015, Two at High Noon was published by Nomados Literary Press. Border Blur and Diagrams for a Vaudeville of Poems and Other Works were published by Noir Z from 2019 to 2022. The Apple in the Orchard was published by 1366 Books, dedicated solely to experimental prose this year in April 2024. Dedora continues his experiments in prose and visual poetry while honing his skills in black and white photography. Uh, Multi-talented, much liked, and a great feature on the Toronto small press scene. We're honoured to have Brian Dedora with us today. And we're so fortunate for him to be joined today by his incredible co-judge, Chris Turnbull. Chris Turnbull is the author of Cypher uh, by Beautiful Outlaw Press, Continua by Chaudier Books slash Invisible Press, and Untitled In Own by Q Books, a book of three individual works with Heather Herman and Angela Rawlings. A section of her recent manuscript notes is forthcoming through Gap Riot Press in 2024, and her recent writings includes ongoing collaborative work with Eli Kralji, Gardner, and with Portuguese text, Portuguese text artist Bruno Neva, respectively. Her visual work writing and installations can be found online in print and within landscapes. She cur curates Root, a foot press whereby poems are placed or emerge near trails, uh, you can find more information at www.etuor.wordpress.com. Brian and Chris have read many, many submissions over the past few months and selected five exceptional finalists. So without further delay, let's hear straight from the judges themselves who they are. Hi, I'm Brian Dodora. Hello, my name is Chris Turnbull. I'm one of the judges along with Chris Turnbull for the 2024 B.B. Nickel Chapbook Award. It is a pleasure to announce with fellow judge Brian Dedora, the finalists. In no particular order. Green Screen, Postcards to the Real, Pete Gibbon, Birdberry Press, Peterborough, Ontario. Distractions, Eve Joseph, Baseline Press, London, Ontario. John would say, Stevie Manning, Knife Fork Book, Toronto. Secondhand Moccasins, Melissa Schnarr, Ann Struther Press, Toronto, Ontario. And The Conveyor, Steve Noyes, The Alfred Gustav Press, North Vancouver, BC. We felt that honourable mentions should go to Learning to Crawl and Other Poems, Beth Follett, Apartment 9, Ottawa, Ontario. Rig Veda, Christina Shaw, Ann Struther Press, Toronto, Ontario. Violets, EJ, Ann Struther Press, Toronto, Ontario. Water Wept, Days Jeffries, Ann Struther Press, Toronto, Ontario. So congratulations to all the finalists. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity also to thank our supporters and our donors that makes this successful. But we also want to give all best wishes, good wishes to all the small presses that participated and for the future of small presses. Thank you. And finally, congratulations and thank you to all small presses across Canada. Thank you, Brian, and massive congratulations to the finalists, Pete Gibbon, Eve Joseph, Stevie Manning, Melissa Schnarr, and Steve Noyes. We can't wait to announce the winner of the 2024 BP Nickel Chapbook Award at the upcoming Indie Lit Market on November 17th. And another incredibly huge thank you again to our judges, Brian Dedora and Chris Turnbull for all their support and work this year. Now, let's take a listen to our incredible finalists as they share excerpts of their work. We'd like to introduce Pete Gibbon. Pete Gibbon is a writer and instructional designer. His poetry has appeared in magazines such as The Ex-Puritan, Bywords, and The Humber Literary Review. And his chapbooks have been published through Ottawa's Apartment 9 Press and Peterborough's Birdbury Press. 
He currently lives in Toronto with his wife, daughter, TV, and typewriter. Hi, everybody. My name is Pete Gibbon, and I'm reading from Green Screen, Postcards to the Real, which was published by Bird Buried Press. So for context, uh, this, this chapbook was a long poem that I wrote in the nine months before the birth of my daughter. Um, I began writing them the weekend we found out she was coming and completed the sequence before she was born. Um, each poem was written in a single setting, sitting. There was minimal editing and the length was limited to a single index card. And each poem was written on this typewriter. So I'll read some parts of it. It is not late. The sky, it is not clear. A storm was raging all over the province, but here. The sky, though, its colors busting out of whatever chromatic prison it's been kept in all summer, blushing like my mother's legs after brushing against her lawn chair. A dentist laid me down and opened my jaw so wide it shuddered. They asked if I'm okay. After this, my front teeth no longer made me feel society collapsing around me. It was mom's 75th birthday today. Same day, Heather's doctor confirmed her pregnancy, but we couldn't risk telling mom in case it wasn't viable. Interpassivity. I wake up in the morning and you're pregnant. I grab a beer out of the fridge and you're pregnant. I seal the lid of my disposable coffee cup properly and you're pregnant. I describe what Lacan means by the real to an old friend and you're pregnant. I take a photo of the apartment I lived in 10 years ago and you're pregnant. I feel satisfied that the photo is automatically stored on my phone and you're pregnant. Crossing the Don Valley is a bit like a birth, I guess. Pulling out of the subway tunnel, at least, is like an escape from the real. I come to Regent Park every two weeks to hear your heart beat. Sometimes it thunders through our midwife's shaky speaker. It's supposed to mean you are healthy, but to me it sounds like a train is flying at me. I guess that hope is a type of madness, yes. Before we go out, I stand in the mirror and ask her, should I change? Only if you want to. I need to tell people this is happening to me in order to make it real. I am pushing against the confines of childhood. Put a green shirt on me, let me disappear. No, I do not enjoy sleep. Yes, I do like changing diapers. Very repetitive tasks interest me. My partner and I dislike privacy. How our bodies change as we get older does not matter to us at all. We are confident that in the future, the world will be exactly the same. Thank you for asking. Postcards to the real. Are you a dream or a process? When we are older, will I be the parent dragging you across the street? Or will we cross at the corner, hands locked? And when you are old enough to break that lock, will you be the motorist driving past me? Or the passenger of that car moving way too fast? Nature will take its course, of course. That's scary enough. Will my messages to you be delivered? How can I make sure you will carry them with you? Thank you. And now please give a warm welcome to Eve Joseph.
Chief Joseph lives in Victoria and works on the unceded territory of the Lekwungen people. Her three books of poetry were nominated for the Dorothy Lifesay Award. In the Slender Margin, published by HarperCollins in 2014, won the Hubert Evans Nonfiction Award, and her most recent book of poetry, Quarrels, won the 2019 Griffin Prize. My name is Eve Joseph, and I'd like to read my poem, The Hour Before Dawn, from Distractions, published by Karen Schindler at Baseline Books. The Hour Before Dawn. How many silences penetrate other silences? The monk with his bows, a violin at rest in its black case. Two of Adelaide Crapsey's three, the falling snow, the mouth of one just dead. Not the dying or the death itself, but the wide open O of the moment. The breath gone from the lungs, yet still in the room. In one of your letters you wrote, silent as a tree falling asleep. Overly poetic, I thought, but still, I climbed out of the bedroom window that night to sit on the roof and watch them. Alders, poplars, maples, the medicine trees, and the ones that once held a child swaying in their branches. Make no mistake, I saw them relax their limbs and droop, settling into their dreams. The sturdiest amongst them are living coffins. And of course, we introduce the incomparable Stevie Manning. Stevie Manning is a poet from Toronto, Ontario. Her, chap her debut chapbook, Joan Would Say, was published in 2023 by Knife Workbook. It took Stevie 36 years because she is a late bloomer. Hi, my name's Stevie Manning. I'm going to be reading I Removed All My Body Hair for this from my chapbook, Joan Would Say, published by Knife Workbook. I removed all my body hair for this. A white buzzer on a Saturday night, twisting like a coil of estrogen. Joan would say, leave the city in a station wagon with a man in the middle of the night. In New York, it's more brunette. I decided I'd be a mind, not a body. Never at home doing unwanted things in the mirror, secretly. I've always wanted to dance, or at least treat myself to learn. Bent over, I'm not a bad looking woman. I've been told my ass was ironed by God. But at the time, I'm afraid I was full of piss, cocktails, and strong French feelings. Shame, a great part of my life. And up next, who could forget Melissa Schnarr? Melissa Schnarr is an Anishinaabe and Kenyan Keheka from Biakashwenon Territory, Walpole Island First Nation, with family ties in six nations of the Grand River Territory. She is a writer, scholar, and educator who is currently pursuing a PhD in Indigenous Education at Western University. Her work has appeared in the Thames Review, TNQ, the Winds Review, Lunar Station Quarterly, and Yellow Medicine Review. Her first poetry chapbook, Secondhand Moccasins, was published in 2023 by Anne Strava Press. Bojo Sego, my name is Melissa Schnarr, and this is my poem, Northern Lights, from Secondhand Moccasins, published by Anne Strother Press. Northern Lights. Pitch, black, cold, December, Nagojoanong. I remember the warmth of your hand, the warmth in our throats, women making thunder. We are not afraid, you told me. This is us reclaiming. That deep night protest, voices electric, buzzing, willful. When late hours caught up with little legs, you put me on your shoulders. Breaching the crowd, surfacing, bright hats and scarves, people undulating. Pinks, yellows, greens, dancing light meant to ward away wendigos. We were vibrations, sundering silences. I was too young then to understand why we needed medicine, the foreboding of the night. To me, you conjured Wawate and set me on its back. That's how I knew 
you were magic. Miigwech. And of course, finally, we invite Steve Noyes to read from The Conveyor. Steve Noyes is from Winnipeg and lives on Vancouver Island. He has published seven collections of poetry, the most recent of which are Small Data and Rainbow Stage, Mancuria. Steve recently returned from the UK where he completed a PhD at the University of Kent. Hello, my name is Steve Noyes, and this is from my long poem, The Conveyor, published by the Alfred Gustav Press. Welcome to The Conveyor. You have come from one port of the earth to this one, bearing a hand-sized proof of an elsewhere that admits to you. A while ago, breathing the same recycled air, you saw two rows ahead, a traveler select from brands, offer their card. Who were you to not? Up went your hand. Now you clutch the duty-free gift bag and glide through the vaulted cavern of travel land. Oh no, it seems you've accidentally slipped into the past, the granted easily taken, for you haven't quite arrived. You drift through this perpetual vacation museum where the strongest memories persist. You're like a Solon remotely sent to inspect the reduced transport sector. These days of vector and pestilence, you must rely on messed up, medleyed senses and the jumbled voices of your fellow travelers. A parallel conveyor runs beside you, others on their other trips. It is an illusion. All falter the same way. The delusion of difference will fade. Muzak, faintly playing, shrewdly chosen to sway the mind, conveys your incubated youth, reheated from frozen, the time signature of your latest escapade, a citizen of nowhere, the mere transmission of a global server, O oh, fortunate masked renegade. Cold air from an open jetway reminds you of the smell of hot chocolate, Christmas holidays, the travelers in parkas, pom-pom toques, the babble in the regional terminal, the awesome guy, the amazing girl they started dating this fall term, grandparents conquering a lifelong fear of planes, leaning on their walkers and canes, showing a stranger a baby's picture, the wrapped corners of presents poked from backpacks, warm bodies milling, festive atmosphere, a background carol's tinkling charm at once both quaint and indistinct, the chilliest evening of the year. The memory evaporates, flights have stopped, an external monster has gone off its feed and left you on the tread's endless drop past glittering shelves of merchandise, no one to overtake, no one to fall behind, no raison d'etre, vacated space, figuring ground at a steady speed beneath the broken geodesic panes and trusses hanging in linked isosceles triangles, a whole arcade caved in. Still, on you slide, past the space posters of the comely young, slaves who shill for long-gone corporations in connubial states of near undress, their beautiful raiment, decanters of perfume, jewels resting in their cleavage, accenting their ears, models no longer forking technicolor meals or lifting drinks from coasters, the thrill of fading printouts of card purchases. You've been treadmilling a long time. Surely this kiosk selling stuffed animals or that one, keychains and fridge magnets, is the same one you already passed and then forgot. That fellow in line for coffee isn't his meaningful look, some sort of previously arranged signal. Don't those shiny aisles of paperbacks Celebrity memoirs, harlequins, true crime, trigger another swoon of deja vu, or does it mean your whole experience 
It is nothing new. A blasé sensibility combined with sheer fatigue has blunted your journey's purpose to arrange a tryst. Visit your distant relatives. Extend supply chains. Bucket list. And yet you are too tired to turn back and investigate this hypothesis of eternal return. Your suspicion that this pair of pilots in their caps is like a record hissing skip is whimsical, not a true likeness. You gamely press on because you lack the gumption to retrace. You fear discovering that there is no superior epiphany back there, or worse, a severe negation, the erasure that consubstantial beings must never face. Thank you. Wow. Well, what a lot of beautiful works and amazing writers. I mean, it really is a massive thrill to support these titles and their publishers. So, so nice to announce these finalists this, this evening and also to hear from them directly. Um, if anyone's interested in purchasing these, purchasing these amazing chapbooks, please do, of course, go to the publisher's websites. You can find all the details of the finalists on our social media. And we've got our amazing volunteers posting the links to the chat books in the chat. Um, so thank you again to everyone for watching and supporting. And uh, if you want to meet some of these amazing poets, um, some of them will be in attendance at the Itby Lit Market. Stay tuned uh, for our reading announcement to follow to see who will be attending. Um, but you could purchase this chat book and get it signed by them as well, which is equally as exciting. Uh, so stay tuned for more information. But yes, uh, thank you so much for attending an Age of a Night. Uh, if you want more small presses, more chapbooks, and more amazing writing, and of course to find out the winner of the BP Nickel Chapbook Award, um, as we've said all night, make sure to join us in Toronto on November 17th for our Indie Lit Market, along with some of your favorite small presses from across Canada. Keep an eye out on our website and on our social media, Twitter and Instagram, for updates on event information and more. And congratulations once more to Birdbury Press, Baseline Press, Knife Fork Book, Anstruther Press, and the Alfred Gustav Press. And of course, our five shortlisted authors, Pete Gibbon, Eve Joseph, Stevie Manning, Melissa Schnarr, and Steve Noyes. Your writing and talent deserve this recognition and love. Absolutely. Congratulations to all five of you. And thank you to everybody for coming out today and for supporting independent Canadian literature. We couldn't be here without you, and we really do hope to see you on November the 17th in Toronto. Thank you, everybody, and good night. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night.